All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today I got someone who I've wanted on the podcast for a long time, one of our good friends who's been around the block with us, the HK crew since day one. We got Todd Martinez, a.k.a. Cash Money, a.k.a. I don't know, you got a tons of names, baby. <laughs> but we got T.O. Double D in the building. What's up, Todd? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on here. I appreciate it. I know uh, I've been meaning to stop by and spend some time with you and finally be able to make it today. I got time today. We got time today, baby. Todd has been, Todd, you've been like, you know, obviously we were friends, but like we've been seeing each other since like the start of HK. Like you've been around when you were on Dynasty or Aftershock or whatever, always like at SC Village. Like you've kind of seen us all grow up. From the crazy ass little kids running around SC Village to now, yeah. so I'm kind of glad that I could get you on here because not not a lot of not a lot of people have kind of seen the whole the whole thing from yeah. start to finish. So yeah, I mean it's crazy to think <laughs> that you know I've been playing paintball since 1995. You know, 95 is that what it? Was? Yeah, and you know obviously I met you guys like. I want to say around 99, yeah, 2000. 99, 2000, we you were know, running around SC Villas like crazy, man. <laughs> you know, how old were you in 1999? Dude, uh, 18, 19, one of those two. I got to do the math. Yeah. I'm 39 now. I got to reverse okay. engineer that. <laughs> You're probably like 16. 16. Right? Yeah, okay. There so, we go. I mean, like just knowing you guys since you were all. I'm 16. My brother was, yeah, 13. Yeah. So we were young. I mean, just, I mean, having been in the, paint, in the in paintball now for almost three decades, just to watch all the people that we have grown up with and who we've become and what we've done and all the places we've been. It's, it's really interesting. It feels like time flew by so fast. It's crazy. I remember you guys rolling up with your, was it you or BC? One of you guys had the lifted, uh, lifted Tahoe that had BC, BC would roll <laughs> through. We, we'd be at, we'd be at SC village and this Tahoe would come through on like 22 inch chromed out reels and the subs in the back just boom yeah. boom boom we're it's like dude they're spider. here dynasty's here <laughs> <laughs> <You see? laughs> yeah no but i was gonna say like because not a lot of people like were there like at sc village and, and and where like where it all started so i thought it'd be cool to get you on the podcast yeah kind of see what happened there was one there was one day at uh sc village where me and jay were getting beat up by this big guy and you came and saved us i don't know if you remember it yeah so i saw him at sc village like a couple weeks ago no, he, he was there he's still playing he looks exactly the no, same he doesn't yes this he does was strong he was on top of us and, yeah. and todd jumped a fence and came and saved us i'll never forget that <laughs> And we weren't even that close back then, but you're like, dude, I got to help these guys out. We're getting beat up. <laughs> oh, man. No, he, you're underselling it a little bit. You know, like we'd go out there and we'd play every weekend, both days. And then you and the crew would show up, yeah. you know, like the little brothers and be like, today's the day that we're going to beat your ass. You know, <laughs> and, you know, we would be like, all right. OK, man, you guys want to get another spin? All right, That's let's true. do it. We go out there and a 10 man, right? Yeah. The, the, all the HK kids, you know, roll up 10 deep. We roll up 10 deep. Yeah. You know, we'd go at it for a bunch of games during the day, yeah. you know, and then go back and, you know, it was, you know, you, you roll up with the crew, we got the crew and, you know, we'd, we'd knock it out. But SC was crazy because that's where all the 10 man teams came to practice because you had the big hyperball field. The rocket field. Right? All, that, all the yeah. different hyperball fields yeah. that they slowly built. Yep. And, uh, you know, every weekend we'd be out there playing on those different fields. You know, we'd be fighting. You know, you guys would go take on other teams. We'd go take on other teams. We'd be practicing. But it was always like, you know, you guys would always show up every single weekend. And that's what I really appreciated about you guys, that everybody was dedicated. You might have been in the parking lot, yeah. you know, trying to fix guns, you know, borrowing guns, yeah. borrowing paint, stealing a pod from somebody yes, to be able to get awesome. another game. Like, yeah. you know, like you guys were always about playing the game you know you were always trying to get there all you'd be there every weekend no matter what yep. and you guys were always trying to figure out how to get on the field and get better and play against the the big dogs you yeah know <laughs> and we knew it was at SC Village dude so many times like like you just said we I would go out there or my brother or whoever we didn't I, our families weren't like rich or whatever there was times we didn't have money for paint but we still show up like you yeah. said whether teching guns or whatever or if we had to run around the corner and snag someone's 500 bag, <laughs> we went and played. Like you said, we did whatever it took. And yeah. a lot of times, Giovanni knows that, sorry, we would sneak in to the field because yeah. we just didn't have money to pay for wristbands. So yeah. like, like you said, we were, <laughs> we were dedicated on a whole new level to the sport of paintball. Like yeah. we, whatever it took yeah. to do it. And Giovanni let it slide too. He'd be like, all right. You he know. knew, he knew. Let I know those, you knew. Let those dudes go play. <laughs> <laughs> he just got mad when we started shooting the ref. Shout out Pumpkin. We were blasting this guy one time, but <laughs> no, I thought it was awesome. Just like our whole crew. Yeah. To kind of see where we've all gone. Like, what you're doing now, now coaching Houston Heat, we were able to turn this 
paintball thing, which was just for fun back then and started with the, the HK Army headband, which all the pros were rocking and you guys were rocking into like what it is today, which even for me, when I walk in every day, I'm like, dude, this is crazy. Like you said, it's all flown by, but it's crazy because yeah. we weren't supposed to get here. No one at the top liked us. Yeah. Like I didn't like us. Giovanni would tell us, he's like, you're not going to be able to break through JT and die and empire. They're not going to allow it. We're like, we're still going. You know, yeah. we just kind of been fighting and going for the paintball dream and, 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 it's worked out so far. So. Yeah. You guys were literally like the little rascals of the field that never gave up. <laughs> no, you know? no, like you, you, we got our asses kicked and got <laughs> back on that field and got our asses kicked again. Well, you guys were just, you guys were so true to yourselves. You know, you were true to who you were, right? Because there was also that time period, like after we started playing 10 man, X ball came around, you know, a lot of you guys played with legacy, yep. right? So you guys are out there with legacy, um, you know, trying to grind it out on X ball, but Everybody always knew, you know, like you guys always stay loyal to your HK crew. You know, I don't even want to say like the brand back then because it wasn't about the brand. No, it was, just, it was just about your crew. The crew. Right? Yeah, we had a whole. Showed group. up, yeah. you know, 10 man from 10 man to X ball to seven man. Like the most important thing for you guys was that like you guys were all doing it together and you had such a big crew. And, you know, it was all about just like, you know, let's do it, the army, you know, the like army. let's do this together. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's the reason why you guys were able to uh, survive and thrive was because, you know, everybody like cared, everybody believed yeah. and, you know, it was just all about, you know, let's do this together. Yeah. And we, we allowed everyone in. We had quite the characters. You had Smog, Mike Bretto. We had Jules Foote. We had me, my brother. There's Steve Quatt. Like, there was all these different characters. Yeah. Right? Bang Anus. We had a guy named Bang Anus in the crew. Shout out, Bangers. <laughs> Thank you for the Audi. I mean, it's just like we had quite the, like... You know, if you weren't cool at like your school or whatever, you could come to us and we were, we were going to yeah, take you in. It was like, we had the, we would allow everyone in, yeah. but it was all just about having fun. But yeah. I do remember though, at SC village getting to play a lot against that dynasty guys. And then like Lasoya and avalanche guys back then. And it was a really good place to play against yeah. the pros. Iron men, Iron men yeah. all the time, yeah. a ton of Iron men. Yeah. Like everybody was there. You guys just standing at the gate, you know, let us get a game. Can we get a game? We all, we'll beat your ass. Yeah, no, yeah, just let us in. Just yeah. let us in. And we got in a lot. There was yeah. a lot of times I got in. 100%. I remember there was a big practice and Lasoya was there. And that's when the Lasoya Timmy was out. And <laughs> I think this is how we got crazy. But I saw Lasoya take his list Timmy and just huck it. Yeah. He used to throw his gun a lot. Back all the then. time. When we were in Avalanche, he would chuck that he gun. He would, right? Times. Yeah. I thought it was cool too. So, so did I. I. So like, I started yeah. throwing my gun. Chuck my gun. Yeah, yeah. I started throwing chuck guns back then. <laughs> <laughs> Lasoya gave me a lot of, I did a lot of bad things because of Lasoya. Yeah. Shout out Lasoya. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he was a great influence on the younger generation for sure. <laughs> yeah. Until I picked up my gun and it was completely scratched and I was like, man, I don't want to throw my gun anymore. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do this. Then they made it a rule. No more throwing your guns. No more throwing guns, dude. Lasoya saved that one. Yeah. So, so, but we're talking about SC Village. So now you're now like full circle. You're, you're like helping Giovanni and them at SC Village. Yeah. How's that? Is it still like when we were, when I was playing back then and going a lot, the parking lot was slammed, the arenas where we were doing, I, I know it was the 10 ball, but then they built the arenas out yep. and then the, the turf area was jamming too. How is it now? So we are still in the process of rebuilding, right? We have two fields done, um, for air ball, but Gio wants to build a whole new, fully turfed out uh, hyperball field. Sick. Um, I asked for two uh, kids fields, like two small arena fields, so that we could do like gel blaster stuff, yeah. and then like uh, the kids league that I was working on last year that we started at Hollywood Sports. Um, but then we still have two more turf fields that are in process right now. But really what I've just been trying to do is rebuild that culture, yeah. right? I want it to feel like it felt when we used to play. It was there, crazy you know? when, you, like, when you showed up to SC back then. It was like, yeah. oh, shit, I'm here. Yeah. This, this is the Mecca and everyone who's good is here. Yeah, I want yeah. you to feel like anybody can show up anytime and get a game. Yeah. You know, like I want somebody... I want, Constantine Federal was there the other weekend. Let's you know go, I mean? baby. Like, Fetty's in the building too. Shout out <laughs> Fetty, baby. You know, <laughs> like Fetty's walking around, you know, and first point, you know, just runs straight to the 50, you know, uh, blows up my friend Heather, you know, shoots her in the face. She walks off. She's like, I, I tried, you know, yeah. shoots another dude, shoots another dude. He's standing in their corner in about 20 seconds, you know, yeah. like I want it to be like where, you know, anybody can walk in and be like, I want a shot at that guy, you yeah. know, or I, I can show up and I don't have a team and I can get a game. Yeah, you know? that's like, huge. 
I want it to feel like it's very competitive yet uh, very accommodating as well. You know, yeah. I want I want anybody and everybody to feel like they can show up and start learning to play like tournament paintball the way that we did. And that's yeah. why, you know, it's really important for me to get those kids fields going because I want to get, you know, the the younger generation playing paintball. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, for know? sure. That's that, too, because uh, it uh, going back in the day, if we didn't have our crew, it was so hard to get a game. Yeah. Like if someone comes by themselves, is, are they possible right now to jump in? Yeah. You'll make it work? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that, that's that, like, I feel like so, certain places that's hard, you know, really it's hard. just not for like a lack of effort, but just sometimes organization, yeah. you know? And so I just really want to make people feel that they can show up, right? Yeah. You know, they, they can show up and, you know, we'll, I will get you on the field, get you a game. I'll find you a team. And the community has been great, right? Yeah. All the people that are like, oh yeah, you know, we'll we'll, we'll let jump in with us. You know, we jump in with us, yeah. and you know, when the other weekend, I was like, hey, my friend Constantine needs a team. Like, does anybody <laughs> want to pick him up? We'll take him. There was uh, plenty of people that were we'll like, yeah, him. yeah, we can jump in with us. You, you can know, be on my team, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. No, I mean, because I have a lot of good memories from SC Village back in the day. Shout out Giovanni. I hope that it gets to that. Like I see when you're posting it, look, it looking like you're building that back up. So it's good to like yeah. see you out there, Ryan, out there, and it looks like they're trying to pump it again so i hope that they do yeah i hope that they do secondly you i haven't talked to you at least on this podcast since you've been the coach the coach of houston heat yeah exactly that's and, what i'm saying so i'm here that's why he's here baby <laughs> we're just getting into some other stuff but okay so last event we're watching second place you guys were looking solid looking really good and these tampa bay damage mofos somehow had your number what, what were we thinking because you guys were looking solid Going into that, is Damage just on it right now? Like, this Jason Edwards guy, all these guys, they're looking a little bit older, but they're still handling business. I don't get it, Todd. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> Rainy, I see you. I don't know what yeah. kind of poker tricks you're pulling, Rainy, but, yeah. I mean, they look solid. They obviously had a convincing win on you guys. I'm sure you've watched the footage. You've gone back on it. Yeah. What, well, what were your thoughts on that? The thing that sucks is that, you know, they've actually knocked us out of three of the events this year. Is that what it is? Yeah, they, they knocked Fuckers. us out of Florida. Uh, we we're 4-0 going there, our first game on Sunday. Uh, we got in all the spots that we wanted to get to, and they honestly, every single time, beat us playing slow, old-school damage paintball. You know, and it's just tough because, like, you know, we're an aggressive team. You know, we want to, you know, push the tempo, and sometimes it's just hard to, you know, slow down, you know, because all throughout the prelims in um, Chicago, you know, we're pressing the tempo, we're attacking super hard, and we're playing at the same time they are every time. So you're not. So every single one of our games went into full X ball because them in the pit right next to us, all their, they played a bunch of three point games that ended, uh. right? So we're playing full, like, full like x-ball matches yeah. because they're done and we're like watching them play like we play a point and then come back to the pit and sit there and their point would still be going <laughs> and we'd be waiting and we'd just watch them and they would just shoot a guy you know and then like slow methodical movements or they'd lose a guy be down bodies and then slowly work it out so like we really tried to you know make it a point to make sure that we didn't that we were understanding of the style of paintball that yeah. they wanted to play. And honestly, every single time we've lost to them, it's been, you know, they beat us their way, yeah. you know, and we just needed to be better. You know, one thing here or there, uh, the rain, you know, I'm not making excuses, but the, uh, the rain, rain looked sucked, gnarly, dude. I'm like, you know, yeah, it the rain gnarly. sucked because, you know, it's always, the game slows down a little bit, yeah. you know, it's muddy, it's dirty, but you know, it's always just, it's mistakes. You know, all these points that we are, <laughs> excuse me, very capable of winning. Yeah. You know, we just need to be better. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just playing good paintball right now. And, yeah. and last year they played good paintball as well, you know, and you know, this year it's just, you know, kind of really coming to fruition. You know, I think Joey's doing a good job, but you know, anywhere Rainy Stanzak is gone, the team starts winning. Dude, him and so, Roddy like, Squires, anywhere they go, they win. I don't yeah. get it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're talking about this, the last event, and, like Rainy needs to start being put in that conversation of like, some of the most elite players of all time Seriously. Just because like everywhere he goes, he wins. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, he has a, a leadership style that, you know, promotes winning, you know, it, it, it helps other players do their jobs better. He's very intelligent. He's really Super good at communicating, um, you know, how things need to be done. You know, the, the pros, the cons, you know, the consequences, the benefits of like why, he and the team does what they do, yeah. you know, and, you know, it's just very obvious. You know, he's just such a difference maker. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's been hard for us to, uh, 
you know, beat those guys this year. But, you know, it just happens like that sometimes. Yeah. I, you know, I think that our team's also playing some very good paintball. You guys look you know? good, dude. And Connor came out looking good. Everyone yeah. was looking good. Tyler was playing strong as always. Ronnie looked good. Yeah. I mean, like our roster from top to bottom, like we have a lot of really good, talented players. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it's my job to make sure that, you know, I put everybody in the best positions. And, you know, I need to do a better job at coaching, you know, because <laughs> it comes down to the little things always. Right. And that's just, you know, we play more, we practice more, we talk more. You know, we figure things out, you know, and our, our time will come, but we're definitely due. I'm thinking cup, cup. We're due up for a Houston Heat cup win. This would be a big one if we come out with this. If we come out with this. Do you think, like, when we were playing back in the day, like, there would be a team that we knew was slow, so we would slow down, and when they were, but we would always get smashed. We try to play their game. Do you yeah. think if you, like, switched, like, would have went heavy on them or, like, not played the game? Like, <sighs> So, or, or, you know, I don't know. Every time I swear, like clockwork, like, all right, fuck whoever we were playing back in the day faction or whoever it was like, all right, we got to slow down. And then we get smashed because we weren't doing what was working the whole yeah. time. I don't know if you ever well, like think like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because when we played them in Florida, the first event, we were up in all the spots, you know, and then they sat back, didn't give us any bodies, shot a ton of bounce shots. You know, we lost some lost some some bodies and then you, they give a lead and then they slow it down even more. Yeah. Then we lost to them in. um uh, Philly, right? Same thing. It was like a super, like heavy at the snake, right? We, we were gotten to the snake. We lost Chad George right before we played them, who had been playing the snake all the time. We get Moorhead. He still gets in there. Connor's playing over there. Um, and again, they got to all their spots, shot heavy, shot bounce shots, didn't engage in unnecessary gun battles. Yeah. And, you know, we maybe pushed it a little too hard. So yeah. I was like, made it a point yeah. in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to play you knew it was slower. You had yeah. to dial. Yeah, we have to like yeah. maybe dial it back a little bit, yeah. you know? And, you know, we dialed it back on the snake side, but I still sent our guys on the Dorito side because Moorhead was playing great. Yeah, he was you know, playing Ronnie really was playing great. And, you know, you know, they shot us a little bit on that Dorito side. We ended up playing a four-point game in the mud. And, you know, one point here and there, you know, makes such a difference. Fetty made a great move in the 2-1 game uh, to come down the snake. He shoots, uh, uh, bounces Jacob in the corner on like a quick shot and then bunkers Keith. Ronnie doesn't know that it's a one-on-one because -on -one it was a three-on-two, uh -huh. but then we shot Jason and then it's a two-on-two, -two, but we didn't know the count, right? So when Fetty makes his move down the snake, you know, he maybe if he, uh, the you know, the ball breaks on Jacob or, you know, he bunks Keith first. Like it's so many different, like Changes everything small right there. little yeah, things. Then yeah. it's a two, two game with maybe a minute left instead of a three, one game. Yeah. You know, we lost Moorhead on the break. Um, I think twice, you know, maybe I could have pulled him up short instead of sending him. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's, it's always one body, one gunfight, you know, like one little thing here and there. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, things are just going their way right it, now. It, it's, being a coach, obviously you're all into sports and you like football and basketball yeah. and everything. But I, I was going to ask you, it's like, it, it, for, because you played walking onto that field and then now not walking on, just being the coach is it's got to be, is it like stressful, more stressful being the coach, hoping you like made the right calls and right plays or, or was it more stressful when you had to go out there and you're down by, you know, one point and you needed to win the game in 30 seconds. Like to me, the coaching is just like so stressful. Yeah. Well, so I, I mean, I played pro for 10 years and now I've been coaching for almost 12 and Damn, it's definitely it different, you know, yeah, it's definitely it's easy, different, yeah. you know, like I feel like when I played, I didn't really think about it. You know, yeah, all I going, thought about was just going out and doing, and doing job. my job, yeah. you know, go out and play. And then when I took a step back and started coaching, now I really think about everything, you know, like I didn't, I didn't really, I was fortunate to play on so many good teams, you know, I was like, I'm going to go to the Dorito side over here. I got Angel and Oliver and yeah, Alex we're going good. that way, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I'd just be playing and then everybody dies over there and it's like, okay, great. That was nice. Like sometimes we go, you know, shoot a bunch of people and then it's just like, okay, we're all, we're winning. Like yeah. now to, you know, as a coach to really think about, you know, everybody's job individually. Yeah. And then it, you have to think about, um, you know, the fields, the conditions who we're playing, you know, past games. Like there's so much more to think about, yeah. but I feel like since I've been doing it for so long now, I feel like it's less stressful. Um, and coaching a team like Houston Heat, we have so many good players yeah. that I can bounce, you know, my thoughts and my ideas. Yeah, you're getting, you're getting instant so good many feedback. Different guys, yeah, you're getting good feedback. You know? And then at the end of the day, the you know the players play, 
right? Like I don't need to tell Konstantin Fedorov, Hey man, when you get to this spot, you're going to look out, you know, you're going to see what's happening. If this guy's here, yeah, he knows he's there. You know, I say, Hey Fedorov, you know, like we're going to go to the Dorito side. This is what we're doing over here. You know, this is what I've seen, you know, this is what I saw them do. And then he'd be like, okay, I kill everybody. <laughs> you know? And then, you know, we win points. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to have yeah, good conversations, you know, because at the end of the day, like, our whole team, you know, the success is foundationally built on the relationships that we have, you know, like our ability to communicate with yeah. each other and pass along information so that we can make good decisions. Yeah. So. No, you guys are doing a good job. Yeah. Like you said, it was a couple of little things and there could have been a, could have been a win there. I think World Cup. I'm excited for World Cup. I'm going. I haven't been to an event in a while, but I'm coming. So I'll be in the, I'll be in the pits too. I used to love nice. being in there and nice. watching this stuff. But, yeah. but I think the squad's good. I uh, Tyler, I mean, you've seen Tyler been playing since what? He's like 10 yeah. years old with Bob Long. <laughs> I mean, Tyler's turned into an awesome player. Yeah. Like, I think he's getting better and better. Even when he was first, when he was first, first on Dynasty to now on Heat, I think he's even better. Like, he's good. How has it been coaching Tyler? 100%. I mean, the development of him, you know, again, you know, you were, I feel like you were always this tall, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like, when I was shorter, you know, like... I remember watching Tyler when he was just, you know, a, a tiny little kid, you know, and watching him grow up, you know, literally and figuratively in the sport. Like now he's just, you know, a six foot two guy that can get into a tiny little, Dude, you know, a tiny little the, box, he the, you know, he's little spot, you know, he's, he's fast, he's versatile. He's an amazing gunfighter. He's got hops, um, you know, he can jump everything, his vertical. You know? He's got to be able to dunk the athleticism that he's got, you know, to be able to do what he does, you know, consistently with, um, you know, also, you know, to have the endurance, you know, to yeah. play point after point after point and not yeah. get tired. I mean, it's just crazy to see that, you know, I think yeah. that, uh, you know, his experience of, having gone from, you know, a program like, you know, Bob Long's Oakland, yeah, Oakland right. Assassins. Um, to playing with like some of those other teams, you know, and then dynasty for a long period. Yep. And then now to be on heat, I 100% agree with you. Like he's taken a little bit from every stop that he's made yeah. and gotten better, but he's also pushed himself more, you know, and as you grow up and you mature, you know, and you have your, you know, self-reflection on, you know, who you are and, you know, what you're about, you know, you're able to make better decisions on, you know, who you want to be. Right. Yeah. And he, like, he dedicates, you know, I, I talked to him on the phone, like, you know, dedicate so much time to being great at this game. Yeah. You know, and I think at the end of the day, like you put in the effort, you have the natural talent, you know, and you believe in yourself and like what you're doing, you know, that's the recipe for success. And, you know, he does all of that stuff you know, at, at the highest level that he can possibly do. Yeah, he's he's living it right now. He's breathing it. I had to give a shout out to Tyler. If you guys want to be good, just follow what Tyler's doing because he's on it. The way he eats, the way he takes care of himself. He's in the gym constantly. He's not always posting about it, but I know he's in there. Yeah, 100%. He'll, he'll text me from the gym and stuff, but he's he's living proof of yeah. just hard work since he's literally like nine, 10 years old to now. And he's yeah, one of the yeah. best yeah. and thriving into the pro league. So that's a body like that by being in the gym. Dude, He's yoked. Dude, it's crazy. Let's go, Tyler. 100%. <laughs> Did you see, we took, um, we took Ronnie and yeah, yeah. To the airsoft event in Amsterdam. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was following you guys the whole time. Oh yeah. We're, yeah. yeah. It's, cr it's crazy. Cause a lot of them are wearing paintball gear or whatever, but it's, it's like, a. There's this one team called Second to None, but Ronnie and them, like specifically, we we're supposed to get the whole team out, but everyone couldn't make it. But when Ronnie or yeah, yeah went against these guys, they just like worked them, like the the level. I thought you guys wrecked those fools. Did, what? I thought you guys wrecked those fools. No, man. from the video, it looked like you guys were dicing them up. No, we were, we were, we were. Like it was close. It was weird because you had to learn this game. They they do it. It's by you get this flag and you got to get it. The, the farther you get the flag up the field, mm -hmm. it, it, you get more points. So it's just like a different game. And then there's certain, there's a lot of rules to it. So we we're trying to learn the rules. It wasn't just yeah. going down and getting the kills. You had yeah. to do, you had to play by a certain structure, which is cool. Cause it makes it exciting when you're watching at home. But when Ronnie and Yaya were against like the dynasty of Airsoft, they just smacked them up. <laughs> Sorry boys. <laughs> but it was crazy to see that. Like, cause this is still like in this uh, infant stages or whatever. Yeah. I would, I would call like, maybe like these guys are like, D three paintballers or something maybe, yeah. but it was crazy. Even all of them at the end were in shock. Like, dude, like how good Ronnie and even yeah, yeah was compared to like all their skill level. Just because being a pro. How were the guns? Were the guns cool? They're sick. Yeah, they're really sick. They're yeah. really accurate, and it has the tracer unit on it. It was you got to try nice. it one day. Yeah, you yeah, got to try it. Nice. It was really fun. It was really fun. We definitely got to do that. But dude, I 
What? Oh yeah. What was I gonna ask him before I go? Well, oh, well, that's what we were gonna do. Cause someone was asking, what was the your favorite pro team you ever played on between like AfterShock and Avalanche and Dynasty and all that? Was there one that you could? <laughs> they wanted me to ask. Like, I had like two questions people wanted me to ask you. So, it's kind of it's kind of tough because, again, I have also I also feel like I value so many different things that I've learned, you know, from all those different teams. Yeah. Um, and every single one of them has helped me become like who I am, you know, it says shelp has helped shape like who I am as like a player, a person, a coach, yeah. you know, and I think that, you know, from, from one to the next, you know, I can say that everything was so valuable, you know, from Ironman being my first pro team to getting to play with guys like, uh, Shane Benini. Uh, Rich Telford joined that team when I did, even though he'd already been playing before. Yeah. Um, you know, Matt Marshall, Davey Williamson were, you know, my boys that like helped me get there, yeah. you know, but like those, the old school dudes that were still on the team yeah. that were the guys that I was watching on, you know, grainy ESPN videos yeah. you know I mean? <laughs> and like reading about in newspapers. There used to be a paintball newspaper, you Sick, know, the <laughs> like to, to have played with those guys was really cool, you know, and then like getting into the pro scene, like, meeting the guys that I saw, you know, in the magazines and then getting offered to go play for Avalanche, you know, yeah. John Richardson, one of my best friends in the world, you know, and Chris Lasoya. They are three, baby. And then we get, uh, you know, Chris Lasoya, he's just- Was on that team? Yeah. On the yeah. Aftershock team? Oh, no, no, Avalanche. Oh, Avalanche, Avalanche, yeah, yeah, yeah. Avalanche, yeah. Avalanche, right? three in Avalanche. Yes. And, and Lasoya was Avalanche, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, and then you have uh, Travis and LB, you know, who are two of my favorite people as well coming in and, you know, just having like, Every, each like style. the relationship yeah. and then learning from those guys. Cause those guys were all, you know, the guys that were a little bit older than me, but had been playing, you know, professionally for a while. Yeah. Getting able to like being able to learn from those guys, like, and me being, you know, 19, 20, 21, you know, and like, growing up as a, uh, you know, a certified dork, you know, like <laughs> had some cool guys to like, kind of help me out yeah. you know, with that. Right. Like, yeah. and, um, you know, then you have, you know, Rocky and, and Ed and Weasel, you know, and those were Mark Knopp, you know, crazy Great dudes. Yeah. Um, but you know, that being on that team, it was like, those guys were all really good. You know, we're still playing 10 man. Um, we're winning, you know, events, we're winning events in Europe, yeah. right? Like, learning from those guys and them, you know, taking me under their wing, you know, the same way that like Maddie and Davey did, you know, like on the Ironman yeah. and basically from even before the Ironman on, you know, the paraplegic turtles yeah. playing with Dale, yeah. right? the peg leg. Yeah. Right? Shout out the paraplegic turtles, dude. Like, they got me. We used to watch them on, on the <laughs> DVDs or the VHS tapes my brother had yeah. always. They were good. <laughs> like Avalanche was literally the rock star team. Yeah. You know, the Ironman was like old school, yeah. you know, like, like, uh, they're the Iron Man, right? Yeah. Everything you hear about the Iron Man, they're the Iron Man, right? Avalanche is the rock star team, you know, then to get to go play for Aftershock, who was like the hardcore, grungy Midwest, beat your yep. ass in the parking lot yep. guys. Like, <laughs> you know, these dudes, like they're, the the stories that you heard about them were, were real. That was real. I mean? like, but all those dudes could flat out play paintball. Yeah. Like when I played next to Todd Adamson, Richie Malachewski, I think really, Richie was just like, you know, still one of the greatest players to ever play the game, you know, but... We also had Ryan Williams, uh, Ron Isaacs, uh, Kenny Clamper. Kenny was Clamper, on the team. that's what I was gonna say. Kenny was a little yeah. savage back then yeah, too. He's good. Yeah, like, but still, like playing next to Saransky and Bruno, you know, who were old school aftershock dudes that had already won multiple world championships, multiple yeah. world cups. To be able to learn from those guys, being like a younger guy, and then you know to go play with the guys that I grew up playing with. Yeah, you know, you which got the were best the dynasty world. guys. Yeah. You know. Me, Alex, Oliver, Ryan, Yosh, BC, Johnny, Skinny, Opie. Look at that, know. dude. He got to hit it on every, he got to play with every single legend of the game yeah. like of, of yeah. the sport we like. And, Love. you know, playing those, getting to play against guys like Ryan Moorhead, Konstantin Fedorov, Tyler Harmon, and now, you know, coaching. Uh, I Well, after Dynasty, I went to Infamous and then basically started coaching from there. Yeah. And I got to coach Marcelo, uh, JR. Uh, Bobby Avilas, go, you know, like that, that the couple of those infamous squads, Damian Ryan, Brad McCurley, you know, now I'm starting to coach guys that I played against, that's crazy. you know, 
play against Fedorov on and Bishka on uh, you know the Dynasty Russian Legion battles, yeah. you know, in the mid 2000s, yeah. right? And now I chant, I actually get to coach these guys. Like that's crazy. I, I am so blessed. Like I'm so fortunate to have had like the experiences that I've had because, you know, having like. You know, you go and you room with Steve Rabakoff in uh, a tournament in Europe, you know, and like, I'm just a kid. And we're walking around eating ice cream and playing paintball, you know, to, yeah. you know, now I go to an event and I get to coach Mishka and Fedorov and Tyler and Chad George, you know, like it's, I've had, I've had such a blessed experience in paintball. Like, yeah. it's so cool. It's so fun. I'm just, you know, it's so excited to go to every tournament still. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So cool. You have so such much a, fun. You have such a diverse, like you've done it all in the paintball scene yeah, and, and, and been with everybody. And I'm still learning, you know, still learning, try and try and be better every single time I go out there, you know, and that's why I feel like I'm like in the right place, you know, with the guys on this team. Cause the guys on Houston heat have been together for almost, I think 10 years Shoot, now, 12 time, years. Right. Right. Yeah. Close to, you know, close the, to a decade. So, you know, these guys have all been together for a long time. Yeah. So, you know, being able to learn from them and, you know, still try and, you know, help them be better with my experiences. You know, it's, you know, it's a dream come true for it's, sure. It's so awesome. I was going to say, just, I remember watching you on the sidelines and you're in aftershock and you had a fro. I don't know where you, was it PSP or what, what would it have been? Uh, so NXL was in 2003. I had one, I had one of them in uh, 2003 and then the next one was 06. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Aftershock I don't know was 03. Which yeah. one it was, yeah. but you're in your jersey, you're a and you were flying to the corner. You were so fast back then. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Just because we go and watch all the pro games always as much as possible. I remember you going, you're ripping it out to the corner, which back then it's hard to make those fucking things when the oh, yeah. guns are at like whatever. 30 bucks. Whatever gun you were shooting was fucking ripping, dude. It was like, <laughs> what, what were you shooting back then? What were the. Uh, uh, so I had a Shock Tech Intimidator yeah. that was just amazing. Like The Shock Tech Timmy, dude. They were dude. just ripping. I'm like, holy fuck, Todd's fast. <laughs> those things flew man i'll tell you what yeah. it was hard to outrun those things dude, it was dude i was trying to tell Chances. danny because when we were on legacy we had bobby Vilas, brandon short scott camp we had the we had a good team but everyone was really young back then oh yeah shout out aftermath too yeah you know, that 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 time where i spent on aftermath too was amazing aftermath? Know, with kenny bobby yeah Randy, that was the squad of all squads moose shout out yeah. shout out to shout moose, out baby. moose baby <laughs> <laughs> Moose just moved to Cali. Like, that squad was hard. Yeah, that was the so. hardest, like, of our era. Like, for, like, us watching that, like, that team, yeah. when you guys were all on that team, that team was, like, the hardest yeah. team. Like, so swag. Good. Like, yeah. that team was hard. Yeah, with him, him and him all him you guys. <laughs> that team was mean, man. Yeah. Like, that was, if you're on that team, it was good. Steven yeah. Pitts, like, that whole crew. Dude, my wife tells me sometimes, she's like, man, if you had stayed on Aftermath, because I played with Aftermath at the end of 06, right? when I got suspended, you know, for some fraudulent charges, um, I ended up playing back with, uh, <laughs> back with dynasty at world cup of 06. Right. And then 07, I played seven man with dynasty and X ball with aftermath. Yeah. And at the end of that year, you know, I ended up going back to dynasty full time. Yeah. You know, my wife's always like, what if you just stayed on aftermath, you know, cause yeah. the next year aftermath 08 would have been they won. me, Tyler, Mouse, Jesus. Rainy, Woo! Uh, that's Spitz. a squad. Shout out Spitz. Shout out Stephen Pitts. He was a killer, dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, I believe Kenny was still there too. Yeah. yeah. Bobby, like that 08 squad might have been something. The special. 08 squad was hard, and then with you on it. But one of the events we won in 08, it was like a Cali clean sweep and aftermath one. I remember. I, I forgot which one exactly, but in uh, MPPL. Yeah. That's that team was hard. Yeah. If you're on that team, Jesus. <laughs> Speaking of the chainsaws, though, when you were on Legacy. Tell me that DM4 that you had with the Halo. Dude, those Wasn't things like ripped. The fastest gun. No, they were fast as fuck. They were just all air, it was, but laser I, beams. I there. was just trying to, all the guns were, yeah, those guns were nuts. Iggy had little cheater chips in these damn things. Yeah. The Rocky's yeah. at him, at throwing some special shit in yeah. this thing. I don't know what's going on in the guns, but the Halo, all that shit, fast as fuck. But I was telling him, to make the corner back then was like making the snake. It was so yeah. hard. Yeah. Like you had to run and dive. Like it was tough unless yeah. you were like a small little guy like Kenny or whatever that could run and gun out there. But it was brutal back then. But, but was, the, that always reminds me of those practices that we had at SC Village when it'd be like Dynasty Legacy, right? Yeah. And like 
all you guys just had those DM fours, <laughs> just shooting twenty balls a second. Because yeah, we, we wanted to play you guys so bad. So when we got the chance and we would, would we would get a kill, we were always throwing extra on you guys. Yeah, and then, and we were like, then, then you're getting mad at us, and you yeah. would tear us up. We'd always end up getting torched, but we took it like a champ. Yeah, or we play La Soya, I remember, and La Soya put like two loaders in the back of Gator Glaze one time at the thing because Gator would jump in with us or whatever. Yeah. Just Tore Gator's head off, like, yeah, because we were being rude and being stupid, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's just the way it was, though, you know, like you earned your respect, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, okay, you, you give it to cool. us, we're gonna give it to you, yeah. I, but I, I appreciated that about you guys, though, you know, like, even if we beat you guys 10 times in a row, you'd be waiting there for number 11, be yeah, like, but, let's go, yeah. you know, and then you guys beat us our ass, you know, and you'd be like, and you'd be like yeah. It was like winning we the Super you. Bowl, dude. It we was like, you. let's go. Yeah. I remember Dave Baines, we were playing them. I don't remember exactly what team he was on or if it was Cat Factory, but Dave Baines was out there and I finally got him and I, I ran him down and I put like 10 in Dave Baines' back and he was so mad at me. He wanted to kill me, but I've been trying to shoot Dave Baines like my whole, like for years. I'm like, I finally got him. Ripped him and he wanted to kill me for like a whole year straight. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> but we're good now. But yeah, he, de he definitely gave it a lot. So yeah, yeah, he, he, would, he would rip you up. But Cool, though. I appreciate you jumping on this. No doubt. Yeah, I also got to give a shout out. I know you do too, too, because the whole, the whole organization at Heat is just amazing. Like yeah. Fedorov is staying at Sergeant Mamadi's house. I got to get close to Sergeant Mamadi. Shout out to Sergeant Mamadi and the whole camp because they care so much about paintball. It's ridiculous. I didn't realize like what was going on even within this organization till like I got closer with yeah yeah and everyone yeah. so it's just crazy how much that family loves paintball supports all of you guys to to play this game at a high level so I, th I think that's to have people like like them yeah it's crazy and like Bart on impact like those type of guys is just is awesome so I mean Bart and Randy have obviously you know been uh really like big proponents of you know, moving the league forward. And it's definitely because they are people who actually care. Yeah. You know, Bart, when, I remember when they first came into the league and he had his team and, you know, they were out there all the time, really caring, really practicing hard, asking for information, trying to get better, you know, constantly. And then they did. And then now Randy, he, you know, he's out there and there's not, a thing that you could ask Randy for that he won't give you if you're like, Hey, this is going to make me better, you yeah. know? And he's always looking to help out, you know, everybody on the team, um, you know, professionally and personally to, you know, just, you know, grow as a person, as a player, as a teammate, you know, like he, they want nothing but the best for us. They're so supportive, yeah. you know, they're so positive all the time. And, you know, having them, you know, in paintball, I think has been, you know, huge, you know, for, for the league, you know, for the industry, yeah. having people who are, you know, very selfless and caring yep. and just want to see things done better, see things done the right way. Yeah. But, you know, definitely shout out to Randy and Mama D, you know, from the outside, you don't really they don't see, it all. see it all, yeah. you don't know. And now like being a part of this organization, like I'm just so thankful that, you know, that they care so much about, you know, me and my family and, you know, all the players that, you know, dedicate their time to uh you know in their lives to this game and yeah. giving us the opportunities to do this every single time oh, it's amazing yeah i tell mama d every, at the end of every tournament thank you once again for giving me another opportunity to go out there and do this yeah it's awesome they're Appreciate awesome if you don't Sar sarge is the owner of houston heat mama d is his wife and they're just awesome people and i was trying to tell yeah yeah mouse i don't know what mouse is doing one he he kind of did heat dirty on some little backdoor deal maybe and he kind of did uh Bart dirty leaving impact. And those are two, those are the two guys that those guys got the money. Like they pay the good, I don't know what mouse is doing mouse. You better make this one work out. That's all I was saying. <laughs> Shout out to the leopard King. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Chad Boucher. Leopard Number King, two, baby. the leopard King. If you didn't cop the drop that just dropped and you dropped in the ball, you know what I'm saying? You got to get that leopard King. Number two, HK armor deal because that's the drop of 2023, baby. You You're see that? Right here. Chad Boucher, baby. Oh! I got your back, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> you made it, baby. All right. Thank you, Tyler. I appreciate it. No doubt. Thank dude, you. I was fired, dude. Cool. Thank you so much. You killed that.